Hi, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store, and this week we're going to take a look at five more affordable favourite ukuleles. This week, looking at the tenor size. The tenor size, dare I say, is the most popular ukulele size in the world now. It's evolved over the last 15 years quite quite substantially. It was the soprano when I started, and then it was the concert, and then the concert just inspired the whole world to pick up and play a ukulele. But what happened, I think the contemporary famous ukulele players, the people like Jake Shimabukuru and James Hill and even Corey and Kale over at Ukulele Side, the players that are inspiring people to grow on the ukulele, they're all playing tenors, they're all playing fingerstyle, they're all playing classical arrangements and the, the needs and wants for the ukulele world has evolved and now the tenor ukuleles make up 70% of our sales here at Southern Uke Store. Um, and I know a lot of people are purists and they like the other size and that's fantastic but actually more people are going to be looking for a tenor ukulele if they're starting out now um, than necessarily the other sizes. So we're going to look at five affordable favourite ukes. Uh, we're going to start with a uke that we made the ukulele of the year a few years back. This is the Snail SUT M1. It's a laminate mahogany tenor. Uh, very simple to look at, but with a really nice, sexy, high gloss finish and an abalone style rosette. It has an ebony fingerboard and bridge, which is a really nice hardwood and feels like a bit more of a deluxe upgrade under the fingers than if you were to look at the sub £100 ukuleles out there. You know, your kind of Amazon basic favourites, the ukes that we spend a lot of time repairing. <laughs> and setting up for people. Um, the SUTM1 is kind of the starting price point for where things become consistent and harmonious every time. The 35mm nut width is the most common nut width for a beginner. Um, if you've got average size hands or small hands, you may prefer this. It's not always about the hand size, but most people coming in as a beginner, they're looking for either a 35mm or a wide nut uke. And this is a 35mm nut width uke, so a standard nut width. The SUTM1 comes in a nice gig bag. It really is kind of everything you need to get going. So let's give it a play and see what you think. Next up today, we're going to take a look at a classic. This is the Ohana TK20. I featured an Ohana in the other two videos because I think Ohana have been quietly and consistently making some of the best beginners and intermediate ukuleles uh, all for the last 15 years, as long as I know. My first day at Southern Ukulele Store, I was handed a box of Ohana ukuleles and I was taught to set them up. And I still love them even now, so I love recommending them. They're more traditional. There's nothing wrong with tradition. You know, if you want to play the old stuff, if you want to look at the history of the ukulele and pick it up and feel like you've got something that's got a bit of gravitas to it, then Ohana's a great choice. You have a solid mahogany top with laminate mahogany back and sides. You'll notice it has front and back cream binding and a simple two-ply sound hole rosette. The Ohanas are made to look like vintage Martin and Gibson ukuleles, so the mahogany thing fits nicely with the theme, but also the simplicity of the cosmetic parts of the ukulele mirror the old ukes of yesteryear. You have on this model an oven coal fingerboard and bridge with a 36mm nut width, just ever so slightly wider um, with a 28mm string spacing, so it feels a little bit bigger in the hands and the neck depth and shape on an Ohana is a little bit thicker than on a Snail or a Carla. You've got open gear tuners that are um, Grover, Grover style open gear tuners, nice and reliable. Um, there's nothing not to like. Let's give the Ohana TK20 a play and see what you think. Thank you. 
As the tenor ukulele has evolved in the last decade, so has the shape and style. This ukulele here is a super tenor. It's a normal tenor ukulele in scale, but the actual shape of the ukulele has an elongated lower bow. This is a design uh, patented by Canalea ukuleles, and this is found on their Islander AST4. Islander is the Chinese made sub brand of Canalea, so the affordable version of a Canalea ukulele, which mirror some of the popular features of Canalea ukes themselves. The body is obviously the super tenor shape, which in theory gives you more bass, more depth. I find it makes them sound more balanced as well. You know, Canalea ukuleles can sound quite quite bright and um, quite stiff from new, but the super tenor has a bit more of a a calmness to it you know it rounds out the notes it smooths things out the islander has a pin bridge which is something you wouldn't have seen before if you're new to the ukulele but very common in the guitar world the way you would restring this ukulele is you pop the pin out you would tie a knot in the string and then you push it in i make it sound so easy but you will at some point shoot somebody probably shoot your cat with the bridge pin when it pops out don't be scared though, it, with a bit of patience and a bit of practice, the bridge pins are just as good, if not better than some of the other styles out there. It's a laminate acacia body with front and back black plastic binding. You have an Indian rosewood fingerboard going up to the Islander paddle headstock with the open gear tuners. A super tenor is a great place to start if eventually you want to learn the guitar or if eventually you want to move on to a baritone it has a bit more of a kind of throaty deeper sound to it so the ast4 is a great place to start and it's a very unique uke in the context of this video so let's give it a play and see what you think Next up today we have a ukulele that's mean and moody. This is the Enya EUT Mad in black. This ukulele is also available in a translucent blue or a natural mahogany stain. Um, I figured it would be cool to feature the black one because why not? You know, we don't often feature the black ones because they're so hard to film without getting that light in the, uh, in the video. The uke itself is all solid mahogany. The stained black is, it differs from one to the next. Sometimes it's more translucent, other times it's a flat black color. But every time there is this uh, abalone style rosette, you have a technical wood fingerboard and bridge. The bridge itself is a through bridge. So you would feed the string through and then tie a knot in the sound hole and pull back when you're restringing it. And the uke has a slotted headstock with a really nice sharp point to it. So it would be good in a self-defense setting. <laughs> With, um, with gold and black tuners and really nice um, kidney bean style uh, buttons. The neck is stained black on this particular one as well. But the neck is satin and the body is gloss. The reason you would have a satin neck is so that it doesn't feel sticky from new. It feels lived in, it feels uh, aged and mature, but still nice and shiny and brand new. You have strap buttons on the Enya's as well. So you've got an Enya uh, strap button on the top and on the bottom of the neck. And I guess we should talk about Enya. Enya would be the brand that many targeted ads would have pointed you to over the years if you were looking to buy a new ukulele. They have a mixed reputation. My honest assessment of Enya is if you're buying it from a dealer, you're gonna get a good product. If you're buying direct from them, they, have, uh, they are a company that have terrible reviews for their customer service when dealing direct, but fantastic reviews for their ukuleles. So bear that in mind when ordering. You know, I, I, I do Enya, but I was very skeptical at first based on the fact that the company themselves have always been known as a direct sales company from China. But the ukes are well designed, very, very cool. And I feel like when we get them here and we can weed out and we can work through quality control issues, what you get is a solid brand with a really, really good, unique product. 
and ultimately I want to sell you ukuleles that you want to play and the EUT Mad is one of those ukes. So let's give it a play and see what you think. The last uke we're going to look at today is a personal favourite of mine. This is the Carla KA SDHT. The SDHT stands for Salt Dog Hair Tenor. And if you're wondering what that means, well, um, that means that this ukulele has a salt and pepper finish, a dog hair finish, and it's a tenor. Huh? I oh, know, it's, it's hard to explain. Let me try and explain. The wood on this ukulele is mahogany. The uke is all solid mahogany, top, back, and sides. You have some cream binding on the front and back and a simple uh, white mother of pearl rosette. You have an Indian rosewood fingerboard and bridge going up to the Carla headstock with lots of tags on it, but you can see here open gear tuners. The salt and pepper bit is this finish, which is lots of white uh, and gray lines going through the grain pattern of the mahogany. The way they do this is by sanding and grain filling, sanding and grain filling, and then doing lots of layers of staining as well. So eventually what you get is a dog hair finish. You get the salt and pepper being, you know, the salt on you know, the, the white against the black, and then you have the dog hair finish, which is the process of how they get it. So it feels textured like the hair on a dog. I hope I've explained that well. This is a very, very cool uke, definitely worthy of being the last uke in the video today. If I was a beginner in 2024, uh, at the time I'm filming this, dated this video immediately, classic. This is a ukulele that I would hope I would walk into a shop and see. And as any time I can get them in stock, I'm gonna have these in stock. And any time that I can recommend them to somebody, I'm gonna recommend them. So let's give it a play and see what you think. <laughs> 